Welcome to Police Simulator Patrol Officers. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing it. This game doesn't offer a lot in its current early access state. It's a review of the early access. And I actually disagree with the amount of positive reviews this game has got because whether it is early access or not, the developers should always be trying to do their best and it seems as though there were a lot of corners cut with this game. However, it doesn't take away from the game being fun in certain aspects, like some of the game is fun to play. I was given a key, so a massive thank you for that. And before we jump into this video, make sure you are subbed to the channel, turn notifications on, and if you want to support me as a creator, there are channel memberships, Patreon, and a merch store you guys can take a look at in the description. Remember, all of that stuff is optional. And without further ado, let's jump into it. When you jump into this game, it's set in a place called Brighton, and I thought they were possibly using locations and stuff because I live in a place called Brighton. However, it's based on the American Brighton, I live in the UK in Brighton, and it's just where the game is set, it tells you that on the Steam store page. But you load in, you choose your character, you get to your first shift. This game doesn't explain too much to you, you have to use a handbook in order to pick up on things, and the game doesn't even explain how to get into your handbook, unless there is a thing popping up on the side of the screen to tell you what is going on. So for an example, the very first time you see like an expired license plate is going to pop up on the right hand side, explain a little bit about them and it's going to tell you to press H to go into your handbook. However, when you're actually playing the game and you don't have one of those like tooltips on the side of the screen, there is no way, there's no shortcuts or anything like that to get into your handbook. Besides, you have to hold tab to bring up your, basically your item wheel. And then you can go into your police computer, which is just the map of the game. Then you can click at the bottom left corner to bring up the handbook. That is going to be vital to your gameplay experience because it's going to teach you a lot about it. And obviously there are lots of different police simulators out there. You've even got mods for games like GTA 5. You have LSPDFR. But I'm not going to compare it to any of those. I'm reviewing it based on it just being a standalone game and exactly what you get in terms of the value for gameplay from this game. Some of the reviews you see on Steam will say there is a lot to do in the game. There really is not. At the very start, your first shift, and the shifts run from 8am to 4pm every single day. You can do five shifts per week and then take two days off every single week. But you will start off this game only issuing parking tickets. That's all you get to do. And that's not even a typical police officer's job. In the UK, I don't know about anywhere else in the world, but we have people called traffic wardens who go around clamping vehicles, like basically locking up one of the wheels, and they issue parking tickets and things. It's not a direct police officer's job. However, it was quite cool getting to go around and you look at the license plates to see if they're expired. You check the parking ticket meters and all that sort of stuff to see if they're expired. There are some vehicles that are parked on the side of the road in a no parking area. You'll have some facing the wrong direction, you'll have some too far into the road, some that are on the sidewalk. There are several different options and I really like that about this game. However, in order to unlock more things to do, you have to get XP. Basically XP. It's called SP in this game and it's your shift points. For going around, if your duty is to issue parking tickets for that shift, you'll get bonus points each time you give one out. But make sure that if you are issuing parking tickets, especially for a no parking area, when you get the options pop up to interact with a vehicle, you can pop up tool tips to help you out with this. But a vehicle that's in a no parking area, you also get it towed because it's illegally parked. And that gives you bonus points. So you get better, like you get more shift points. But on the other side of things, if you issue a parking ticket and it's wrong, you lose conduct points. These aren't points just based on a point system, it's based on a percentage. If you cross over at a crosswalk, or what I would call a crossing, then you will lose, like if it's a red light and you're not supposed to go, so if it's not green man, you will lose two conduct points, but that's percentage. So if you lose 20 conduct points during a shift, you'll lose 20% of your XP for that day. And I don't feel the system should work like that at all. Because you will be wrongfully, like, you'll lose conduct points for things that you shouldn't. And not only that, you can bypass a lot of the stuff in this game. But if you just go to the side of the crosswalk and you cross the road, so basically you're jaywalking, you're not using an actual crossing, you don't get penalised for it. But each time you cross a crosswalk and it's a red man, so you're not supposed to cross, you do lose two conduct points. 
So with the progression system, you're going to have to do an entire shift, see how many points you get, you might need more to level up. As you level up, you do unlock new things to do, you get different callouts, and eventually, you will get hold of a police cruiser. I'm going to get into that stuff in a little bit, and there's going to be another video where I show you gameplay and how I actually felt at the time of playing and doing all of this recording, because I recorded this game for four hours. Overall, my playtime on the game is six hours, but I had to do things in between the recording. So four hours of actual game time, that's what I recorded from it. And when you progress through, I think it's just one level, you can actually start getting people in trouble. Like, you can file a report for someone speeding. However, the system is very, very badly implemented, and it's the most boring thing you will do in this whole game. You stand there with a speed gun, and you wait for cars that are over the limit, the speed limit. It doesn't actually tell you, depending on the part of the region you're in. You have to find the speed limit sort of sign at the side of the street. And I feel you should know that stuff all the time. So when you turn a corner and go onto a different street, it should pop up somewhere on your HUD and tell you the speed limit. Not only that, it takes far too long for the game to tell you which speed the vehicles are going at. And there aren't a lot of big streets currently in the game. So I spent an entire shift almost standing in the exact same spot just with like pointing my radar gun at vehicles and the speed limit for the area I was in was 35 miles an hour. A vehicle went 35.4 miles an hour which is over the speed limit because you should only be allowed up to 35. Anything over 35 even if it is 0.1 should still be illegal but that was a wrong judgment from me apparently. And then on top of that, I issued a couple of parking tickets. I think there was one for an expired parking ticket meter, like a parking meter. And that was the wrong thing to do, apparently. And there are a lot of other issues in the game as well, because you'll get certain areas of the map, depending on the region you're in, that will say, like, if you, if you go to the left-hand side of this little area, it doesn't have a box or anything to show you this is somewhere you can't park, in terms of, like, a special parking area. But there was one where there was a taxi stand, an arrow pointing to the right. You walk along to the right, and there's one that says taxi stand pointing to the left. So anything with, between those two signs should be classed as a taxi stand. Yet there was not a taxi, just a standard sedan. And I put a like ticket on it, I issued a ticket for it being parked in a special parking area. And I specified it was a taxi zone, and that was the wrong thing to do. You're not allowed to issue tickets. Because the same thing happened with a disabled parking spot, or like a handicapped zone. And it was like a business van. There was no indication to say the person that owned that van was handicapped or anything like that at all. So there's a lot of mechanics in the game that are scuffed as well. They don't work how they should. But then carrying on, I spent three hours playing the game, doing the same shifts over and over again. And I eventually unlocked the car. This car is by far the worst part of this entire game. I jumped in, you have to uh, obey speed limits, which is absolutely fine. But when you do pick up speed, you start spinning out. The controls on this car are so bad. But the worst thing is as well, because you'll have callouts at this point. You accept the callout, so you're now on duty, heading to either an accident, or you're heading to... I don't know, say there's a wanted person in the area, you're in a rush because it's an emergency, you've been called out. You still have to obey speed limits. You're not allowed to speed up. You lose two conduct points each time you break the speed limit when you're driving. But even when you're on an emergency call out, you're still not allowed to speed with lights and sirens on. But not only that, I had two different accidents... And a lot of the time, I wasn't even being called out for them. They just randomly happened in the game world. I think that's a cool feature. But I had two of them that were outside my currently playable area. You're set to a certain district, and the game was giving me a couple of accidents outside of my playable area. If you go out of the playable area, you get fired. You have to start that day all over again. But another thing, I saw a parked vehicle in a no-parking area. That was out of the playable area. I don't think they should have done it to where you're locked to a certain region. I, I think that... Like, that's pretty much the core of the gameplay as well. And I just think that shouldn't be how it works. You should have each, like, district, because there's only one currently available. You should have each one just have a free roam. You can go around and be a police officer in, no, like, in any part of that region. Or that district, whatever you want to call it. 
But yeah, there's a lot of issues. The car handles like trash. The speed gun is dreadful. I got so bored of that speed gun. It was unbelievable. I went back to issuing parking tickets because I couldn't be bothered with that speed gun. But not only that, I had to test a few of the features like pulling out your stun gun. There was a guy that was wanted. He started running from me. There was no way for me to catch him. He was too quick. So I pulled out my stun gun and simply stunned him so that I could get him to the floor and I could go and make the arrest. But no, that was the wrong thing to do. It was unjustified. But there was no other way of me doing it. I went to an accident where there were three ambulances that turned up and all clipped within each other because that happens a lot in this game. And I got my gun out because it was aggravated assault and I just wanted to make sure people know I'm the law. I'm, just, I'm not going to shoot you. I'm just going to scare you with my gun so that there's no trouble and I can get you all arrested and the people that are injured, I can get an ambulance and I lost conduct points. Also, the game tells you you are legally only allowed to carry an ounce of cannabis. And I saw a vehicle, I searched a vehicle, and I found an ounce and a half of cannabis. So that's an illegal amount. Yet searching the vehicle on the person that was acting dodgy, and also arresting that person for carrying an illegal amount of cannabis, was unjustified. The game doesn't work how it's supposed to. And it's annoying, because if you're, say you're 250 shift points away from leveling up and unlocking something, if you get 300 and you lose 20% of your conduct points, you're losing 60, so that's 240, you have to do another entire shift before you can level up. And it's not the case of losing the conduct points, that's fair enough, it's the fact that you lose them for the wrong reasons. And another thing I noticed, some of the vehicles and the people will just randomly pop into the game world, and not only that, if you issue a parking ticket for a pickup truck, and you walk around a couple of corners, like you go to a couple of different streets, when you come back, you'll see the same parking ticket put under their windscreen wiper, but the vehicle will be completely different. I issued tickets for two pickup trucks, and by the end of the day, they were close to the police station. By the end of the day, when I was coming in to end my shift, they had both turned into, I think one was a sedan and one was a taxi. But not only that, when your shift is over, you are harassed to go back to the station. It just pops up non-stop dialogue saying, your shift is well over, get back to the station now. And they really emphasize on now. But then not only that, you get back to the station, you end your shift, you're looking at the map to decide on a different region to play, or to like a different shift to take on. And until you start that new shift, the game will just constantly say, your shift is well over, get back to the station now. You can be in your seat in the station, and they'll still tell you your shift is well over. So there is a lot of work that needs to be done to this game. It's £16 on the Steam Store page. And they said they're possibly going to increase the price of the game. So overall, it's not a bad game. I did have fun. If I didn't enjoy it, you wouldn't be seeing this video. I spent four hours actually sitting there playing the game. Three hours it took me to get a car. I feel the progression system could be way faster. However, I feel this is even earlier than early access. There is a lot of stuff like everything in this game just clips. I found an invisible barrier. There are lots and lots of issues, like bugs with the game. There are lots and lots of them. And as I said, there will be a video. You guys will see some gameplay so that you can see exactly how it felt when I was playing this game. And because of the amount of bugs, the clipping, the like everything I've mentioned, all of the negatives towards the game, I can't recommend this game. I feel it's been released far too early. They're claiming it's not going to take too long. I think they said like roughly a year or something in early access development. But for the price you're paying, being £16, for what you get in the game, out of three possible districts, you're only allowed to play in one, and you start off in a very small part of that district and work your way up through the progression system, which I feel is far too grindy as well. I can't recommend this game. I really can't do it. I love these simulators. I love stuff to do with the police. I played quite a bit of LSPDFR. One of the main reasons I stopped playing was because of the amount of issues, because it was full-on, like, modding GTA. And it was tough to sit there and do. But yeah, the game itself is a good game, but it's just let down by bugs and a lack of development. So I can't recommend it, but we're going to leave the video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it.